welcome class 12 in today's class we will try to do electric potential right and in it okay we will do no doubt that electric potential we will try to also learn about what is meant by electric potential difference next electric potential due to a point charge electric potential due to distribution of charges and lastly we will try to learn about electric potential at any point due to an electric dipole okay let's try to see uh, let's try to uh, learn all these things if possible if not permitted then the remaining portion we will have to do in the next class right so now let's talk about electric potential so electric potential when we say potential in physics as soon as you hear the word electric potential then you have to remember work done as soon as you remember electric field then you have to remember force so electric potential when you remember this electric potential when you hear electric potential you have to remember what work done work done per unit charge in the case of electric potential in the case of electric field you have to remember as force per unit charge like that okay so in the electric potential how do we define electric potential electric potential may be defined as the amount of work done in bringing a positive charge from infinity up to that point inside the electric field okay irrespective of the part followed by the test charge or unit positive charge suppose if a charge suppose capital Q okay is residing somewhere here this is a charge capital Q and let's take it that the field of this capital charge is like this here okay this is the field for this given charge and you want to find out electric potential at a certain point of observation let's take it as P here like this got it so you need to bring a unit positive charge and this unit positive charge it should be taken as one unit charge we call it this unit charge as test charge okay test charge then as per definition what happened it is defined as the amount of work done in bringing these unit positive charge or rather test charge from infinity when i say infinity it should be well beyond this field okay it doesn't mean that it is a distance of the star not like that if it is little bit beyond the field of this given charge then we may treat that as infinity so from infinity if you bring this unit positive charge from infinity up to this particular point inside the field okay against some repulsive force you need to bring it now so that against that electrostatic force you need to bring this test charge if this is positive then what happened this is also positive so there will be a repulsion so what happened against that repulsive force the amount of work then in bringing this unit positive charge from infinity up to that point inside the field okay that is known as what work done per unit charge call it that work done per unit charge we call it as electric potential and when you try to bring that unit positive charge up to this point it will be irrespective of the part whether you are bringing along like this whether you are bringing along this part whether you are bringing along this part it is immaterial right so up to this point if you try to bring that unit positive charge the total amount of work done in bringing unit positive charge from infinity up to that point against the electrostatic force irrespective of the part we call it that as what electric potential now electric potential mathematically we can write as w by q naught w represents work done q naught represents the amount of charge that is brought from infinity up to that point if you can't bring that unit positive charge who knows this q, q naught may be possessing some sort of uh, five positive charge then you have to divide the whole work done by five so that you will get work done per unit charge right yes that work done per unit charge we call it as electric potential got it so its SI unit will be what work done SI unit is coulomb 
charge okay uh, i mean work done si unit of work done is joule uh, si unit of charge is coulomb so it will be joule per coulomb and this joule per coulomb is equivalent to ball in electric city got it it may be whether it may be electrostatics or it may be in current electricity okay so your joule per coulomb is equivalent to ball instead of saying joule per coulomb you can simply say as ball denoted by capital v its dimensional formula is what ml square t inverse cube a inverse what is this a ampere okay t time l length mass got it yes you know how it is coming yes you must know it why because this work then is force into distance you can take it force we know that force is mass into what l t inverse square right that is force into l distance means the total of the dimensional formula for work then will be what m l square t inverse square right divided by a t right ampere into time so when you do that simplification you will get this dimensional formula right yes now next let's try to see about electric potential okay electric potential difference i should say so what how will you define this electric potential difference difference of potential between any two points inside the electric field we simply call it that as electric potential difference or simply potential difference but if you want to write in a definition as per definition in the examination then you can write this electric potential difference or potential difference between any two point in an electric field is defined as the work done per unit charge it will be always per unit charge okay work done per unit charge in moving a unit positive charge from one point to the other point against the electrostatic force of the field irrespective of the part followed by the test charge okay suppose if you take it let me draw somewhere here if you take it an electric field okay of whose charge somewhere here let's take it that charge as q here as we have taken okay let's take it this as q charge is residing and for this q charge it is the electric field now if you are going to take two points here like this a and b suppose let's take it this point as a and this point as b suppose if you try to bring or try to take a unit positive charge from one point to another point naturally there will be some force of attraction between the test charge and this okay and so during that it may be attraction or it may be repulsion doesn't matter okay so what happened in trying to bring or take the unit positive charge from one point to the another point it is nothing but it is the amount of work done in bringing that unit positive charge from one point to the another point inside the electric field against that electrostatic force we call it that as what electric potential difference so this electric potential difference is denoted by delta v vb represents electric potential at the point b a b a represents electric potential at the point a so this difference in potential okay per unit charge so what happened it will be the change in the potential energy now work done and energy are interconvertible so instead of writing that dw let me write as potential energy okay so change in potential energy per unit charge that we call it as electric potential difference so instead of writing like this we can write as potential energy at the point b potential energy at the point a i'm saying potential energy not electric potential okay potential energy at the point b minus potential energy at the point a so difference in potential energy we denote it as difference in potential energy delta u so 
UB divided by Q0. This is nothing but the potential energy per unit charge. Okay, for the at the point B, potential energy per unit charge at the point A. So we can also define this electric potential difference. Okay, in terms of potential energy. What potential energy? Electric potential energy per unit charge. So potential difference at any two points in an electrostatic field is defined as the potential energy difference. Potential different potential energy difference per unit charge. Okay, so that is known as electric potential difference. Now let's see electric potential due to a point charge. Okay, consider a charge Q situated at O and P is the point of observation where you want to find the electric potential due to this given point charge at this point of distance R. Now let a unit positive charge is at A. Now, it should be brought from infinity up to this point. So during its path, let's take a particular point A. Okay, let's take a particular point A like this. Actually, while trying to bring, while trying to find <coughs> your electric potential at the point P due to this charge Q, your unit positive charge rather your test charge should be brought from infinity up to this point p and we need to find out that amount of work done okay in bringing that unit positive charge from infinity up to this point inside this field of this charge that amount of work done per unit charge we call it that as electric potential right so in between that infinity and this point of observation, let's take at some particular point A of distance x from the given charge, okay? And if you try to bring that unit positive charge from A to B, where the distance AB is very, very small, let's denote it that small distance by dx we simply call such type of small distance as infinitesimally small distance dx but your force of repulsion if we take this as positive unit positive charge or rather test charge is also positive so your force of repulsion will be there so this is positive test charge is also positive so your test charge will be acting a force along this right but the displacement that you need to bring this test charge from infinity along this line so your displacement dx will be along this right so your work then will be what force dot dx and the angle between them comes out to be 180 degree so your dw comes out to be what minus in this case right yes Let's see, let a unit positive charge is at A, this A, displaced through a small distance, infinitesimally small distance dx from A to B, then the small amount of work done in doing so, that means in bringing that test charge Q0 from A to B will be equal to dW, why distance is also very small so work done will be denoted by a small work done dw and it will be equal to what f dot dx f vector dot dx vector magnitude of f magnitude of dx times cosine of the smaller angle between these two vector that is cosine of 180 degree because this is a straight angle and it should be what 180 degree right and we know that cosine of 180 degree is how much yes right minus one right so minus f dx when you put it all those values of this f f if you remember that coulombs okay force then what happened one q is here another one okay one positive 
charge is here so what happened 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 instead of q1 you are having q instead of q2 you are having 1 divided by distance is what x square so if we need to bring from infinity up to that particular point that means your point p which is also known as point of observation why we call point of observation because here we need to find that electric potential okay so in bringing that unit positive charge from infinity up to this point there are so many such small small dx 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 in bringing from infinity up to this point p so for those bringing up such small small dx there will be small small work done there will be so much so number of dw's infinite number of dw's we can't take the help of summation rather we need to integrate these dw in order to get that total work done if we get that total work done w that will be integration of this w integration of this dw means integration of this last equation right this last equation then what happened you need to integrate this dx from where to where from x is equal to infinity to x is equal to what r we are not going to bring up to here x is equal to zero from infinity that means x is equal to infinity to you need to bring it this x up to x is equal to r okay let's see so this is the next what work out that total work then in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity up to that point p you must be remembering that diagram right that p is what w is equal to integration of that dw as i said and the integrating limit will be from x is equal to infinity up to x is equal to r so you take this if you take it this what minus outside or you can also do in one way that instead of taking this minus if you interchange these two limit then this minus will be gone okay so if you interchange this limit then this will become plus so let's interchange it but these 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q these are constant so you take it outside the integration and then you need to integrate this 1 by x square so 1 by x square is what x inverse square right and the limits have been changed previously it was from infinity to r now it is from r to infinity okay if you do that what integration then you will get it like this got it you must be remembering the integration of x to the power n is equal to what x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 do you remember integration of x to the power n dx this will be equal to what x to the power n plus 1 divided by what n plus 1 right so if you apply that formula here in x to the power minus 2 the value of n in our case it will be minus 2 so minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 right you must be knowing then you will get it in this way okay ultimately what happened we need to replace this by the upper limit first then the lower limit so you take it this minus outside and then what remain will be 1 by x so you replace this variable by the upper limit then it will be 1 by infinity minus this minus is for a formula okay not for this minus minus of you replace this variable by the lower limit then you will get it this 1 by infinity is what it will be equivalent to what 0 got it so minus minus will be what plus here got it so your work then per unit charge that will be equal to what this is for a unit positive charge so this can be treated as work done for that unit positive charge 
that means work done per unit positive charge will be equal to what your electric potential and this is electric potential at the point or at a distance r from that given charge so potential electric potential at a distance r will be equal to 1 by not times q by r now from this resulting last equation we can conclude what your work then is what independent of the test charge that is brought got it if you bring say q naught here instead of having that unit positive charge then work then divided by unit positive charge got it that will be like this this is the work then total work then in bringing that test charge from infinity up to that point p okay of distance r then what happened work then divided by the total charge brought then these two will be cancelled and so what happened it is independent of the test amount of the test charge brought okay and this r is in the denominator so what happened your electric potential is inversely proportional to the distance of the point of observation from that given charge farther the distance lesser will be the electric potential got it closer to what that point of observation to what is given charge then that means if this r is small then the whole quotient will be large got it so if you happens to draw a graph then what happened it will be just like a reciprocal graph distance electric potential or electric field versus what this okay distance if you can draw it then it will be what it will be this is for less than uh, zero that means for a negative charge this distance this is what distance and it may be electric field or electric potential so electric field when you try to draw for electric potential then the graph would have been like this if you are drawing for electric field for a single point charge then what happened it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square right so this was square in the case of electric field so the decrease in electric field will be rapid in the case of electric field but here in the case of electric potential it is only r not r square so it will not be decreased rapidly got it but for that of electric potential uh, electric field i mean it will decrease rapidly like this you will also see this in the next slide okay uh, let's see let's go to the new slide next slide i mean and then let's see how we can draw the graph okay this is for the electric potential versus distance graph and it is what electric potential is directly proportional to 1 by r or you can say electric potential is inversely proportional to the distance so what happens if it is inversely proportional it will be just like a reciprocal graph like this so it will be moving in this way electric potential if you keep on increasing what happens your electric potential decreases but in the case of electric field what happened due to a single point charge i have told you that the expression e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square right so this denominator is square so what happened the rate of decrease okay the rate of decrease of this electric field e the rate of decrease of this electric potential it will be less in the case of potential than that of electric field e why because in the denominator square is there so what happened rapid decrease means what the slope will be what more here it will be moving downward like this got it so if you increase the distance more and more decrease in electric field will take place this blue line represents for electric field red for what electric potential if you can draw like this this is for the positive charge if q is positive that is for uh, the positive charge q greater than zero means positive charge 
then electric potential or electric field versus distance graph will be in this way got it yes now next point electric potential v at a particular point is equal to electric potential difference between what electric potential at infinity and electric potential at a distance r suppose if electric potential v at a distance r then we would have written these as vr like this right that means at a distance r at a distance r like this so what happened electric potential at a distance r will be equal to what electric potential difference between what potential at infinity and potential at the point at a distance r i mean got it so that is what and this number two where i have just said now next not number three let's see electric potential at a point due to a group of electric charges let's try to find it out this one this is nothing but we need to take the help of superposition okay electric potential v1 this is what q1 q2 q3 so on are distributed here like this and this your p is a point of observation got it and it this q1 q2 must be well within the electric field of a given charge got it suppose if you want to find out this q1 q2 q3 here like this and distributed here and if this point p is the point of observation then for this distribution of charges this point p must be well within the electric field of this distribution of charges and say let's take it that this q1 q2 q3 q4 so on okay has the position vector with respect to p as r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 so on up to rn got it then we know that electric potential due to a single point charge q1 will be what 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 by r1 where r1 is a distance between what the point of observation and the given charge right similarly for the second charge also q2 by r2 q4 q3 it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught will be always there okay as we are concerning uh, the intervening medium as vacuum got it q3 by r3 so on so here in the first term for the first charge due to the first charge q by r1 for the second charge 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is there q2 by r2 q3 by r3 so on so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common for all the terms so if you want to uh, find it out the total electric potential due to this distribution of charges due to q1 due to q2 due to q3 so on what happened 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common and we can edit up the what not common term q1 by r1 q2 by r2 q3 by r3 so when one is there one here suffix when q2 here r2 q3 here r3 so we can take the help of summation writing like this qi by ri where i goes from 1 to n 1 to n that means q1 by r1 q2 by r2 then this will go on plus okay now in terms of position vector r0 okay being what in terms of the position vector then what happened we can express as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught this will be their summation of this one will be also there and instead of this ri we can take it as r naught okay minus of ri there should be one vector and this should be modulus this is a distance got it where r naught being the position vector of p naught suppose instead of taking uh, this as r naught if you are taking within the frame of reference say suppose this is the x axis y axis and origin somewhere here then we if, if we know the position vector of this position vector then we can also express in terms of the position vector of this point of observation if you want to write like that then what happened it will be r naught vector minus r i vector okay where i represents what 
from 1 to n that means for all those charges right yes <clears throat> let's see electric potential at any point due to an electric dipole you must be knowing that electric dipole electric dipole is a system of what two equal and opposite point charges separated by a small distance constitute an electric dipole right so let that electric dipole be represented by this a b and this minus q and plus q are residing here and let the dipole length be denoted by this a b of length twice l half of the length l half of the length l okay so let's consider that this point p is the point of observation at a distance r from the center or from the middle point of an electric dipole okay of distance r making an angle theta with the electric dipole right and let r1 and r2 be the distances from the point of observation of this minus q and plus q respectively got it then what happened in order to find out this okay electric potential due to this electric dipole at this point p then what happened we need to find out electric potential separately for minus q and due to plus q and we have to again what do that superposition right to do that what happened we need to take it that this okay po you produce this po so that this po is produced so that to meet what a line drawn from a perpendicular to that po produced and it meet at c let's produce this line okay and let's drop a perpendicular from here to that line op produce and meet at c so this is perpendicular right if it is perpendicular then to some fair approximation we can take it that this ap is approximately equal to pc okay approximately why because i am i am showing you here in a very magnified way the diagram here actually if it is an electric dipole then this dipole length twice l will be very very small right so what happened if that dipole length is very small then this will be just acting this means what this triangle a c p okay a c p actually this is a right triangle but if this right triangle if this c and a if they are very close to each other then naturally what happen a p will be approximately equal to what p c am i right yes why what happened suppose if you are going to draw a right triangle from a let's take it that c somewhere here okay and p somewhere here so if you draw that p here like this c p then what happened that hypotenuse and this perpendicular will approximately be same when this c is very close to a as i'm drawing in a very magnified way okay you may think that how can this a p be approximately equal to the cp i'm drawing in a very magnified way don't forget that this ab is an electric dipole right so let's see and before uh, going to further uh, to that derivation let's uh, take some of the things which are very much essential i need to tell you those things okay now your ap this ap will be equal to no doubt your r1 right and this r1 as i said this will be equivalent to that means ap will be approximately equal to pc but what is this pc pc is nothing but this will be equal to po plus oc am i right so your op or po is taken as r but we need to find this length so that it will be equal to what r plus this length oc so what is this length oc we need to find it out we need to find it out in terms of this dipole length in terms of this angle made by the distance r with the dipole moment 
okay so this angle in terms of this angle theta and this l we need to express this oc these are the known things to us okay l and theta so if you take this right triangle okay and this is the angle so this will be the base this will be the perpendicular this ao will be the hypotenuse so this base will be equal to what l hypotenuse times of cosine theta because cosine theta is what base by hypotenuse got it so your base will be equal to hypotenuse times the cosine theta similarly for that one we can also take it in that way if you draw a drop a perpendicular from this point b onto this op at the point p at the point d i'm sorry at the point d then this is perpendicular then what happened your distance pb distance between the point of observation and the positive charge this will be equivalent to what pd got it as this d suppose if this d is very close to somewhere here then naturally your dp will be equal to bp right now as i said earlier so what happened your distance this bp will be equal to what op minus od so we have to express this od op is what r no doubt r minus l cosine of theta will be coming up in the derivation okay that's what i am telling you ahead before the derivation so let's see the derivation or uh, what the establishment of electric potential at any point due to an electric dipole let's see so for this you need to uh, you can pause this video and you can note down okay uh, the uh, derivation okay consider p be the point of observation at a distance r from the center o of the electric dipole a b got it a b is the electric dipole let o p max an angle let o p this is the line joining the point of observation and the middle point of the dipole let this op max an angle theta with the dipole moment p vector p vector is a dipole moment okay which is equal to of whose magnitude is equal to uh, the dipole length times the magnitude of either of the charge okay twice ql in short and the direction will be from negative charge to positive charge like this from a to b okay so this dipole moment and this op the angle form is known as theta right uh, respectively i will not read all okay we draw the perpendicular from a as i have said and we need to find out this distance co and od in terms of that l and the angle theta got it so you will get it this l cos theta why because these are all base and so your base will be equal to hypotenuse times of the cosine of that angle right that is what it is written here okay this is a very simple derivation okay you need to just uh, do that simplification that much nothing else so your pb will be equal to approximately equal to pb equal to r2 okay and will be approximately equal to pd from here to here this is p this is d in the diagram right so it will be equal to r minus l cos theta from the whole length r you have to subtract l cos theta right so your potential p due to the dipole let's denote it by v and that v will be equal to what v1 that means due to this q1 okay and due to q2 let's take it that this is q2 so what happened electric potential due to the negative charge electric potential due to the positive charge you need to take it separately and you have to what do superposition you have to sum it up okay it is given here so if you do the simplification then it will be coming as what one by r minus l cos theta minus of 1 by r plus l cosine of theta like that got it and in the next slide you will see as what let's see so this is nothing but a simplification only you take the lcm of r minus l cosine of theta and r plus 
L cosine of theta and if you do that LCM then you will get in this way okay the resulting equation is coming out to be like this got it this twice QL you can replace it by what the dipole moment P this is the magnitude of dipole moment P right so if your point of observation is very very much greater than the dipole length if your point of observation that means if your point P is at very far distance from O that means your R will be very much greater than L then what happened you can neglect this second term in the denominator okay when you compare this R square this will be very very small it is so small that it tends to zero this second uh, term only so it will be equal to B is equal to what P cos theta divided by R square so this is the resulting what expression so now what happened what we can find out further now in some textbook you may find this electric potential of an electric dipole along any point on its axial line we can also find out electric potential of an electric dipole on its equatorial line as we did in the case of electric field okay so instead of doing like that if we uh, sum it up here and if we take it that theta for axial line theta will be how much yes zero degree right and if it is for equatorial point it will be perpendicular your op will be your op will be perpendicular to that dipole length am i right suppose for axial what happened this oh sorry i thought that it has been click hmm. It is not click so what is wrong then let me check it okay yes so what happened if theta is equal to zero degree got it if theta is equal to zero degree then your dipole minus q here plus q on one side like this if it is along its equatorial uh, uh, if it is along its axial line then your O will be somewhere here and your point of observation P will be somewhere here got it P is somewhere here then what happened that OP max with the dipole moment angle theta will be equal to what zero degree in that zero degree if theta is met zero degree then you will get the expression of what electric potential due to an electric dipole on its axial line if you try to find out for the equatorial line then a line should be drawn perpendicular to this dipole length and your point of observation p will be somewhere here right and the angle between the dipole moment and this op that angle will be what 90 degree so if you put cosine of 90 degree here then what happen you will get electric potential of course that will be equal to zero okay yes let's try to see those notes in the next uh, slide <coughs> I can't do it that one okay let's take it to the next slide Yes, this is a special case okay when theta is equal to zero that means along its axial line suppose if you take it somewhere here as I said theta will be equal to zero and cosine of zero degree will be what cosine of zero degree will be one here right so it will be giving like this at equatorial line theta will be equal to 90 degree this will be perpendicular okay so if cosine of 90 degree means what zero so the whole thing will be zero okay and up to this let's try to do only up to this portion the next okay in the next class we will try to do equipotential surface and then properties of equipotential surfaces okay okay thank you let's stop it here